Hello again, Roland O'Flaherty here, robotics PhD candidate at Georgia Tech. Up until now, if you've been following along with the hardware aspect of the course, you've built a QuickBot and programmed it using the MATLAB simulator SimIM that JP showed you how to use, and the knowledge you have learned from the lectures that Dr. Eggerstead has been showing you. However, in doing this, the low-level physical computing of the robot has been abstracted away from you. What I mean is that you didn't have to write code to interface with the sensors or send motor commands. I think it's important for anybody who wants to be a proficient roboticist that they not only understand the theory behind the algorithms that they're using to put on their robots, but also the low-level aspects that make the entire system work. So in the next three lectures, I'll give an introduction to physical computing using the BeagleBone Black since you've already purchased that for the QuickBot. This will allow you to use your BeagleBone Black for other projects and applications that go beyond this course. So let's get started. BeagleBone Black is a microcomputer and you'll need either a microcomputer or a microcontroller to do physical computing. So the Arduino is a microcontroller and the difference is on a microcontroller, all the components that you need to do the processing or the computing are located on one chip. And on the Arduino, those are located on the Atmega chip. But the Big Room Black, however, has its components spread out. So we have the microprocessor, the memory, storage, and we have uh, GPIO pins or general purpose input output pins. And this is actually what makes the Big Room Black. Uh, special from a regular computer is that programmatically you can control what these pins do. The processor is here on the BeagleBone Black and that is a 1 gigahertz ARM processor. We also have 512 megabytes of RAM. We have 2 gigabytes of storage. We have uh, an Ethernet port to connect to the internet or network. We have USB to connect say a mouse or a keyboard. We have a micro HDMI to connect the monitor. And what this means is that you can actually use your BeagleBoom Black as a full-fledged computer. You can connect a USB mouse and keyboard to it, a monitor, boot it up, and interface with it just like you would any other computer. Now, it's running a full-fledged operating system, a distribution of Linux, and that might not be what you're normally used to, but it's pretty similar to your common operating systems such as Windows or Mac OS X. Also, the BeagleBone Black is designed to be small and low power. It actually fits in an Altoids container. I have one here to show you. Just pop it in there, and so you can actually use this as a case. So what I would like to show you today is how to get started with your BeagleBone Black. How do you actually write code for it? So the first thing you're going to have to do is take the USB cable that came with your BeagleBoom Black, plug it into the board and plug it into your computer, and wait about 20 or 30 seconds. This will allow the, the BeagleBoom Black to, to boot up. Then, what you'll need to do is enter this address into any common browser. So this, what this will do is navigate to this page here. So the BeagleBoom Black is designed to run a couple of servers on it. One of them is this Cloud9 IDE. An IDE stands for an Integrated Development Environment. Usually, what you'll use an IDE for is to um, program, so edit some code, and debug it in the same application, and, and run your code. Common IDEs are uh, Xcode, or Visual Studio, or MATLAB's actually an IDE. So Cloud9 is an IDE that runs online. And the BeagleBoom Black actually runs a Cloud9 server. So what this means is that the code you write in this uh, Cloud9 IDE is actually right on the board, and you can run it right from that IDE. So this is different from, say, an Arduino, because in Arduino you'll write code on your computer and upload it to the board and then run it. And if you have any problems, you usually put some print, out, uh, print statements to print so you can figure out uh, to debug your code. Here, since it's running right on the board, you can actually debug the same way you would uh, if you were doing the C, C++, or even MATLAB. So let's go ahead and uh, let me show you how this Cloud9 works. So this is what you should see right when you uh, enter this URL into your browser. 
So let's close this. So in the Cloud9 IDE, you have here, uh, your project files are actually on the board. So you have folders and files that are saved on the board. In this section is where you'll write your code. This is your editor. Down in this section is your console where you'll get your output. And then when you're ready to run your code, you'll actually just press this button here. So let me demonstrate this. Let's create a new folder, say. Right click on Cloud9, new folder, let's call it working. And let's create a new file. We can go up here to file, say new from template, JavaScript. So the code that runs on the Beetle in Black that the Cloud9 IDE uses is a type of JavaScript called bone scripting. And so let's create a new bone script. Console log hello world. Uh, your semicolon there. Let's go ahead and save this. Put it in working. Call it hello world. Save. Now, let's run this code. You'll see that hello world is outputted right to the console here. So this is not uh, run on your computer. This is actually run on the board and outputted through its browser or through your browser to this output. Also, you, there are some preloaded demos that come with it. So let's click on one of these, say blink LED. Let me go through this code real quick uh, to demonstrate what it's doing. So first, we have to create a bone script object, B. So that object contains all the methods and properties you need to interface with your BeagleBone Black. Then we're going to set some variables here that tell us uh, what pins an LED might be on. So there's an LED, there's four, actually there's quite a few LEDs on the board, but there's um, at least four of them that you can control. And those are these four right here, right by the USB uh, connector. And the one all the way next to the ethernet is called USR3. So let's set this variable to this value. And we're gonna tell it, the BeagleBoom Black, that this is gonna be an output. We are gonna first uh, have a variable that uh, saves the state of the, uh, of the LED. So we'll just set it to low. And then we'll write that state. And then we'll do that every second by uh, using this command set interval. Every second or 1000 milliseconds, it's going to run this function toggle. And in this function, it's going to toggle the state from low to high or light, uh, high to low. And so let's see what happens when we run this. So now it's running on the board. And what you can see is this LED closest to the Ethernet port is blinking at once per second. So the blink is. Uh, common first thing you do with microcontrollers or microcomputers. So that's all we're going to cover today. And then next, next time, I am going to show you how to actually do some digital writes and digital reads, analog writes and analog reads with the board.